I try to be very cognizant of what precedent's being set, right? Because I think the, one of the, the, the trends that I think is very negative uh, is I have a lot of colleagues on both sides of the aisle who say, all right, um, all that I know about where I'm gonna be on this issue is I don't wanna be alone. I don't wanna be in the minority. Safety mm -hmm. in numbers, go with the herd. Um, that, you know, it, it's understandable in some ways, but, you know, and it's, it's really easy to go into a, a pigeonhole and, and say, well, this is how I'm defining myself. I'm X, Y, and Z, and, and you know, I will just vote accordingly rather than maybe, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. The, we had a contempt of Congress vote for Steve Bannon. Mm -hmm. um, I probably spent the better part of, you know, a day and a half talking to, you know, people who could give insight on the legal precedent, who could give insight on, you know, how those powers have been exercised before, reading court cases. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that, that was time that I could have been spent fundraising or sure. doing something that maybe some of my colleagues were, mm -hmm. right? So there, and there's very little reward because, you know, the, you're never really one forced of nine to or nine that voted to, or not no. one of nine on that. Yeah. But, you know, when it came to Mark Meadows, and when it came to Steve Bannon, it was very clear. He just basically said, I don't recognize that Congress has the authority to issue subpoenas or hold someone in contempt. I was like, well, nope, we do. Okay. We have to if we're right. going to have the power of inquiry. So, um, you know, I, held, I voted to hold him in contempt. When it came to Mark Meadows, it was a very different argument around executive privilege that hadn't been clearly, that was currently being uh, worked through a couple of law suits that were mm -hmm. ongoing. Um, uh, Trump v. Thompson and Meadows v. Pelosi et al. Uh, you know, he had cooperated, you know, but then had ceased cooperation when it got into areas that he mm. was claiming executive privilege and whether or not President Biden can retroactively repeal executive privilege protections, yeah. which was a whole different thing. You know, it's, so yeah. I did not vote to hold him in contempt. Yeah. And, you know, the, but in both cases, you know, I can, I can defend and explain why I did that. You know, right. Versus well, and I think in real time, again, the both sides will take uh, whatever your vote is and grind that up and position it for their own audiences and consistency and, and, and cast and shade it however they want. I can just by what you're describing can understand why you might have a, a vote one way on Bannon and a d different one on Meadows, because there's, uh, as you said, all these precedents. There's also a lot of things that are yet to emerge about the process and the inquiries of what's happening, who's getting like it's it's moving every single yeah. day and to get clarity on these things is terms of your vote hard vote up or down it, it's hard if it's you're 49 or 51 you know you have to be zero or 100 mm -hmm. but i think that the challenge really you know it, it, if if the narrative is these people are evil punish them or this is a witch hunt everything they do is bad you're just getting into this subjective area where you're never able to actually distinguish things, right? Mm -hmm. Like I grew up watching The Daily Show where you'd have you know, a, a member of Congress basically under one administration arguing against themselves you know, four years later when the president of their party was doing the same thing, they were castigating the president of the sure. other party for doing. Right? Yeah. That, to me, that's the, that imbues a sense of hypocrisy if, if everything is relative, nothing is objective, there's no you know, affinity to either an ideological principle or, you know, a legal precedent or mm -hmm. something that is concrete that's not just mm -hmm. they're us so it's good or it's not us so it's bad. The Full Exposure Podcast is brought to you by Dr. Peter Hahn and University of Michigan Health West in appreciation of the creative and artistic visionaries who enrich our lives through cultural connections.